Hey guys, welcome to another W Subaru Subaru WRX video repair video. What I have here is an 11 WRX. You can tell because it says WRX. It's the hatch version. And I'm doing the brake booster. And as usual, midway, I thought, hey, I should record it and show you what's involved. This is the replacement. This is a generic remanufactured from AutoZone by Duralest, but it's been remanufactured re in the USA. Wanted to go original, but they said three weeks shipping and whatnot on, uh, from the dealer for $500. That one was 200 or so. From the SubaruParts.com website, uh, they're asking $300, but a hundred bucks well, a little less with uh, tax and all that. Another hundred dollars to ship it, with that. and another like three weeks or whatever. I don't know. So, anyway, so let me run you quickly what needs to be done. Actually, before I get into that, I should tell you why I'm changing changing the brake booster. It's because there's no brakes. You gotta press really hard with two feet, stand on the brake pedal to get some kind of maybe twenty percent of brakes. And I get a hissing sound. You know, you press the brake and it goes and it's there all the time, which means there's a vacuum leak. RPMs go down slightly, which tells me there's a vacuum leak, right? To troubleshoot it, I removed the vacuum line from here, this guy here. The check valve that you want to also check is with a very easy accessible under the intake somewhere that's right there but to kind of you know troubleshoot this you can just excuse me suck on it it should if you blow on it it should go let air go through into the intake manifold like it is now but if you suck on it Should keep, should keep vacuum. You know what I mean? Should we, there should be no air escaping. Okay, that's that's working. So it simply has an internal air leak, vacuum leak. The booster, that is. All right. So you typically want to start from the inside. Well, start from disconnecting the battery. Negative. Then you, the first thing you do is you remove this this white thing, whatever that was. Probably not going to even put it on. Kind of a clip before a clip. So you want to remove this. I'm going to show you on the brake booster once I get it out. But you're going to see it sticking out, connected to the uh, pedal itself. This guy here, you can see there's a hole right there. This pin then comes out to the left, slides to the left. Here's the spot for the uh, here the hole for the clip, and then this brake pedal is going to be free. And then you have the lovely four nuts all around. Can't even see the top two, but uh, here you see the two bottom. I think there's the top right and inside in the dark spot there is the top left and they're all 12 mil like this and I used a swivel extension and a swivel or a universal thing like this so that's that on the inside then the fun continues now, I was hoping I didn't have to remove the intake manifold, which I didn't. As you can see, this is almost out. Okay, I stopped to show you. You want to loosen this up. That's where the brake master cylinder attaches to. Over here, you got the seal on the inside too. If you have a replacement, replace it. Want to unplug this here. First, probably, then I just loosen up. Loosen up these guys. 
and then loosen up the brake lines, the actual brake lines. The one that goes on top here. I mean, it's obvious, right? And the one on the side. Loosen them up. You want to actually you want to loosen those up first before you loosen these up. Once you got those loose, remove these. I believe they are 12. Yeah, they are 12. Take those out. Remove the brake lines. Suck the fluid out with whatever you've got. I used this syringe with a hose attached to the to it and just sucked it out. It's gonna make your job easier because it's gonna some of it is gonna spill, okay? From the master brake cylinder. Then once you have an open area here, you wanna obviously you wanna remove the intercooler, okay, the bracket also. And there's another bracket underneath. There's a bolt. These clamps here. The obvious stuff, okay, guys? I mean, if you're watching this, you gotta know somewhat what you're doing. So just remove the obvious. Then what you wanna do, remove these lines, like this, this clip right here from the AC line, this AC line. There is uh, another. So this can actually move away and you, you can bring it down because all this stuff is gonna be in the way. Then there is a, another AC line on the bottom here running along the frame. You want to remove it from the clips right here. There's two. One more there. Just push it out towards the engine. And there is it's actually plugged in. There's a sensor. Probably not going to see it. There is a sensor right there. Unplug that. That harness will let you, won't let you move the line down. So you want to make sure you want to move all the you're, you're you're aiming for moving all these AC lines and whatever's in your way down. Okay. Also, undo this. It's tight here, guys. It's tight. Undo this harness here from this clip and just move it down. Push it down. So you're able to push this down, right? Then uh, you also want to remove this hose for the inner cooler, which in my case I was able to access the bolt for the clamp right through here. This guy, it was just right like that there. I'm gonna put it back the same way. Then the only, th I actually thought about removing the clutch slave cylinder. You can see those bolt, the nuts are removed, but uh, I kind of stopped and with a slight force started removing this. I finally cleared, there is this harness, you can see in the back of it, okay, this kind of loops in front of it. Once you get this moving, it's not going to be easy, guys, okay, even those bolts on the inside are removed, it's going to get stuck on the thread, so just work. Oh, no, don't, don't, don't go back, don't go back. So just kind of jiggle it and then move this harness, because it, it's attached on the bottom uh, via clip. So you just want to kind of move it away and then just squeeze this harness between the, the shock tower here and the brake booster. And then you're almost home free. And the only thing that's going to be in the way is this lower brake line. There. This guy here. But just kind of ignore it and just push through. Use, use some muscle. So that should be it, I think. Yeah, so remove all these lines that are in the way. Or uh, make them loose so you can push them down. All right, we're going to continue on yanking this out. You can see that brake line there. It's still in my way. I'm going to just push it up. This is also tight. These fuel lines. Something is falling apart on the bottom and yeah it wasn't actually that bad so that's what it looks like you can say hello to the cabin is that wet no all right so this is fine over here this this is the harness i was talking about okay this is actually in front and you can see this actually attaches to the one of the studs on the brake booster all right so you got to remember to swing it to the front when you're putting it back and our old friend rusty says hello 
So this explains a lot. <laughs> There's actually fluid inside. No fluid, guys. No fluid. Oh, that's why we need to... Oh, okay. I guess we just need to replace the the brake fluid on the inside of the booster and just put it right back in. All right. So no need for the new one. Yeah, but that's... Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, our friend Rusty. Oh, oh shit. Is it water? Or is it... No, it's water, actually. Look at this. It's not even brake fluid. It's water. We got a, a booster full of water. That's a mess. Anyways. Tokiko, made in Japan, original. We need this. Now, remember to, don't just take this out, okay? You need to put it back the same distance on the new one. So you don't have to adjust it while it's still in the car. Remove this little gasket. Whatever it does, let's just put it on a new one. It's there for a reason. Okay, so they are a little bit different. I'm actually gonna measure the distance from the booster to the top of that uh, bolt here or stud and see if it's the same okay so about four and a quarter maybe a little bit less four and a quarter four and four and one eighth okay so there is a bit of a difference yeah you can't really yeah they're out all the way so i'm just gonna i'm not gonna go count the threads i'm gonna go measure it from here and make sure the height of the nut is the same on the new one you know this nut you know, you gotta make sure your nuts are at good height. Very important step. Now I'm actually eyeballing it a little bit. So to the top of the nut, that's three, five, whatever is between five eighths and six and three fourths. Why can't this be in millimeters? Anyways, let's remove this. Okay, that's loose. That's a 17, and you can use a 19 or whatever on this guy. So that was here, right? I think. And this is all we need. Okay, now we can do the measurement again. So what did I say between top of the nut? Three and I think I moved it. Five eighths. A little bit over five eighths. Three and a little bit over five eighths. There we go. Okay, hold that in place. That's probably gonna be a different. No, same size. Lucky me. Hold nut in place and tighten the bracket. Doesn't have to be super tight. This still will turn so you can put it back in the same, you know, the way it was. And that's it, this is it, this is ready to go. Okay, so... Back in you go. Into the hole you go. I'm gonna ignore that harness for now. Just gonna get it in there. Obviously the brake line is gonna... I'm gonna pull on it, the bottom brake line there, and, and try and clear the, maybe the cap. Okay, I'm gonna remove the cap on the Schlaib cylinder. It's gonna give me a little bit more room. Yeah, guys, if you spill brake fluid, remember brake fluid is also in the slave cylinder. If you spill that on your paint, wash it off right away. You probably have a minute or less before it eats your paint away. Oh man, this is... This ain't easy, guys. I mean, I, how difficult would it be to remove the clutch? Kind of thinking and talking at the same time. Thinking out loud. 
Then this is not moving at all. Take that out. Maybe clear the sleigh first. Also prepare for a back pain, you know? All right, different approach. All right, I guess same approach, just uh, maybe some cussing will help. This is, I mean, how the hell did I take that out? Did I have it turned? Does it matter? What's the secret over here? Taking this off would most certainly help. But that involves the wipers, all this plastic, which I'm just probably gonna struggle for half an hour without removing anything else, you know? That's how we get things done, guys. What's in my way? Yeah, I think the slave is the issue here. Maybe angle it more. Oh, 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 it's magic. Let me get this, let's break it off. The fuel dampeners, take them off. No, maybe not. Just this, this goddamn brake line. Two of them actually. Come on. We have cleared the slave cylinder now to get that brake line in front. Maybe break a finger while doing it. Haha! -ha! Ha! That's not in the hole. We missed the hole, guys. And that mysterious gasket came off. Oh my, oh my. Actually, it... the gasket is just off. How am I gonna make it to the hole now? Brake line in the way again. So it's not easy, guys. I gotta take something off. I'm gonna try and take off the bracket for these fuel lines here. I'm way off of the hole, guys. Just way off. But since this bracket is off, I have the brake lines actually move, can move away farther. There we go. That's in. Oh, we're going somewhere. Is the gasket still on? No. Obviously it's not. Gasket on. And here we go. Easy. All right. Oh, the harness. The harness, we gotta move to the front. Do any of you remember? All right, I gotta take a minute. Oh, my back. She might wanna put the cap back on so nothing gets in there and the harness okay there's one more another guy okay that's this guy that's that can stay and i'm just gonna make it into the firewall yeah this wasn't when i was first taking this off i really had to pull because it's so close to the shock tower there we go in all right we're gonna get the inside done. I'm gonna show you the result. Can't really be there with the camera, you know, you're not gonna see shit. But I'll show you the result. And then we're gonna get back in here. Can you see this? The clip and the pin go right through. Now, sometimes there is a kind of a, I don't know, like a spacer or call it a washer, whatever, in between the clip so there is no play side to side but uh, you kind of like shove it in and then you put the pin through but that wasn't here in my case so i don't know if that's supposed to be like that or the little thing is uh missing but uh, this will be fine and for some reason i don't know how that's related or not clutch pedal goes in now hmm and it doesn't come back is what i mean all right guys so quickly now I'm just gonna, first I'm gonna take care of these little plugs here and there, the harnesses, plug it all back in. Then I'm gonna do this hose, clamp it down through there, remember? You know, put all this stuff back. Okay, here and there, there's this bracket for the fuel lines, the master cylinder, tighten up the bolts and the clutch uh, slave what else was here yeah this this can go back on there's that sensor for the 
AC and I was talking about that needs to be plugged in and put the line needs to be put back on and uh, yeah tighten everything up put the lines back on and uh, then I have to bleed the brakes and since this car is gonna see autocross I'm gonna use Motul 600 I think that's what it is all right just trust me on this it's 600 the reason for the 600 is because this car is also going to be uh, daily driven well kind of here and there and only auto x for now next year and then ice racing this winter coming winter most likely track and auto x next year now for mine look this is back 660 i think i have a bottle of 660 motul did i say motul or castro so this goes into the white sti because it's autocross and track it's just better for that but it's worse if it comes to sitting now this bottle has been open for over a year maybe longer this is garbage okay it's i'm sure it's absorbed moisture and stuff i do have to do bleed the brakes on this guy but i am going to reuse the 660 and since i gotta do the bleed the brakes on the blue one i'm going to use 600 and it's going to be still good for all winter and uh, maybe even beginning of uh, next season for autocrossing because it absorbs less moisture it's less corrosive more corrosive six six hundred less corrosive 660 more corrosive 600 less corrosive all right let me show you the intercooler that's the bolt on the passenger side i'm talking about it's right underneath i don't even know if this is the original intercooler never worked on a hatchback before not familiar with the intercooler setup it probably is original but uh, this bracket but this bracket doesn't look original to me and there it had 13 mil bolts these guys here and 13 mil bolts uh, you don't see those on a subaru anyways got most of it on now a few tips before you push this once you got this in before you push it in, go inside and check if that bracket or the, 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 the clip, whatever you want to call it, goes right on the brake pedal thing, rod, whatever, you know, so it hugs it. So it's like this. Mine was on the side and I had to pull this out. Well, you know, not fully, just a little bit. And then uh, position the brake rod pedal thing in between and this uh, does need some pounding to get all the way into the firewall and those inside ones they are fun good luck the nuts that is so got all these lines situated now all that's left is this hose with the clamp then there is a little 10 mil bolt that holds this um, the, uh, the blowout valve in in place then this is the um, what is this where is this going oh yeah that's the vacuum for the blowout valve or is it the recirculating valve whatever you call it on the Subarus I don't need any of this to actually bleed the brakes so now I'm gonna oh yeah and this is fun too guys make sure these fittings they're easy to cross fit or cross thread Make sure once you get it in a little, little bit, make sure look at from look at it from different angles this way, this way, and see if it's straight. Uh, because you know you can't and lubricate this in between the line and the nut, the fitting lubricated, so it's easier to turn. The bottom one that was fun. I mean, it took me I don't know five ten minutes to actually catch the threads and start working it in. All right, so that's done. Now I'm gonna fill this up with the 600 oh yeah i gotta raise it up and remove all the wheels to break those caliper bleed screws break them free and start bleeding not going to show it it's obvious fill that up you know uh, start from the farthest away which would be the rear right then rear left front right front left just keep at it until there is no bubbles or you see the actual fluid if, if you were changing fluid then usually the old one's going to be a little bit darker 
brownish color and you just wait until it becomes clear if you're just replacing brake fluid sometimes you get you know different color fluid like blue or whatever then you just wait for that color to get that true color you know and then you're, you know you're done guys all is done new fluid the RBF 600 everything is bled Let's go for a spin. Before I was literally standing on the pedal and maybe 10% uh, braking. The brakes, the rotors are still rusty. This car has been sitting for three years, I'm told. It had issues. It still does. It's going for tuning right now. That's why I did the brake booster. So it's safe to drive. After the tune, it's getting new rotors, brake pads. I'm gonna adjust the parking brake, new tires, the Falcon 660s, I think. Yeah. Just maybe catch an autocross one or two. Then come winter time, it's gonna get winter tires. Those go ice racing a few times. And then come next summer, next spring, it's gonna get coilovers, for sure sway bars then, most likely different pads. It's gonna see some track days. Right now it's on an economy tool, so there's rarely any boost. The access port 3.0 alignment, obviously, corner balancing. That's it, guys. This helps you out. Subscribe, like the video. See you next time.